Hello everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 115, we'll take a look at an anti-pattern called email-driven architecture. So let's say we have an architect, a software architect, who says, well, now that I've made a decision to break apart the admin services from reporting, how do I communicate that decision to everyone? What the architect tends to do is to say, well, I don't know. Uh, I'll know, I'll just email it to everybody. And so I generate an email and send it to the entire group. Well, let's take a look at that email here. And because somewhere buried in these 21,721 unread emails is in fact your architecture decision. And this is what is known as email-driven architecture, where people lose, forget, or don't even know that an architecture decision was made. And if they never received that architecture decision, how can they possibly implement the architecture correctly? Listen, everybody, uh, Outlook is a great communication vehicle. It's just really horrible as a document repository system. And this is what happens all too often with email-driven architecture. So let me tell you and talk to you about some tips about how to avoid email-driven architecture, because this is really all about communicating our architecture decisions. And so the first tip is to record your architecture decisions in some sort of external source not within the body of the email message. You see, if I outline or even describe or even say what that architecture decision is, and I send that to 25 people, how many systems of record do I now have for that architecture decision? And it turns out, since it's in the body of the message, there's 25 different messages plus mine, which makes 26 different systems of record. And the problem with email-driven architecture is that if I change my decision and email that to everybody, I might not email it to the same crowd. Um, one person might not receive it. And now there's confusion about, well, which version here is right? I'm not sure. And so I like to record my architecture decisions in separate documents called architecture decision records. And as a matter of fact, in lesson 55 in Software Architecture Monday, I actually talked about architecture decision records and what they look like and how to build those. Uh, I also like to store my architecture decision records, whether they be as records or separate pages in a wiki or ADRs, architecture decision records, uh, within a file directory structure. But the point being that there's a single referenceable point, a single system of record for that architecture decision. So that's the first tip. Uh, the second tip is to directly notify only those stakeholders who are relevant to the architecture decision. You see, too many times, we as architects want to communicate our architecture decision and we just broadcast it to the entire group. And the problem with doing this practice is that people are getting the architecture decision who don't really care. It's not relevant to me. And what happens is that they will continue these people to start ignoring your email messages, especially if it starts with architecture decision, until the relevant one comes to them. But since they're ignoring most of your emails, they never see it. Yet another symptom and problem with email-driven architecture. And so it's really <clears throat> trimming down and focusing on the right stakeholder, <coughs> excuse me, the right stakeholder uh, for to receive that where it is actually relevant. So let me show you uh, a template of email that I usually use to avoid email-driven architecture incorporating uh, these tips right here. So let's take a look at this email right here to Melissa. And let's read this. The subject, first of all, as you notice, is architecture decisions, admin services. Hi, Melissa. I made an important architecture decision involving the admin services that directly impacts you. Please see the decision here with a link. Well, let's decompose 
these two sentences right here and take a look at the significance of not only this template, but how to avoid email-driven architecture. I made an important architecture decision involving the admin services. You see, I didn't specify what that architecture decision is, hence avoiding email-driven architecture. However, I did include the topic area. I included what this email or what this architecture decision is all about. I love the second part of this sentence. That directly impacts you. I love this part for two reasons. One, if I can't write that truthfully in the email, then why am I sending this architecture decision notification to you? If it doesn't directly impact you, I shouldn't be bothering you with unnecessary emails, only those that are relevant to you. Furthermore, let's read that entire sentence now. I've made an important architecture decision involving the admin services that directly impacts you. What do you suppose Melissa will do? Chances are, if it's something that directly impacts me and it's an important decision, I am going to click that link and read that architecture decision. So notice I've provided a reference within the email to that single system of record of where that architecture decision is, whether it's a link to our wiki, uh, whether it's an architecture decision record in a file system, uh, there's the link to actually see it. And this is another way and technique of getting stakeholders to actually look at and read your architecture decisions. In our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, um, we have a whole chapter on architecture decisions. And this is uh, one of three architecture anti-patterns actually associated with making architecture decisions. And you can read those in the chapter in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture. Um, other places for references is, of course, my website, developer2architect.com, and specifically, Software Architecture Monday where all of these short lessons are housed. And so this has been Lesson 115, Email-Driven Architecture. I hope you enjoyed this short lesson. Um, stay tuned in two weeks for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you so much for listening.